Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Joseph Banks, and today we're going to be talking about the police brutality that's been occurring at the various pro-Palestinian protests and encampments at the various universities across the U.S. Um, the first one I want to bring up here that I have written down is Emory University in Atlanta. Uh, there have been photos taken uh, showing students who have been uh, grabbed, punched, pulled, uh, and arrested by these pigs, these fascist pigs um, that are arresting all these students that are at a peaceful protest. Um, but the protests stop being peaceful as soon as the pigs show up. Um, now, they're also arresting professors who are showing solidarity with the pro-Palestine supporters. You also see that same thing happening at Columbia University, at Harvard, at Ohio. In, in Ohio State University, they have violent clashes with the police, and they have snipers posted up on student buildings aimed at students, aimed at civilians. In Austin, Texas, they had state troopers come out on horses to try and scare all of the protesters away. Um, and that, that kind of, and the, that kind of shit is just ridiculous. Um, the Cal State Polytechnic students uh, clashed with the police and successfully claimed some of the, uh, claimed a, what did they claim? They claimed a campus building and are building barricades on the inside of it, uh, which is really awesome because that kind of activity is what needs to be occurring. Uh, it needs to be taken in that direction so that we actually have a fighting chance against the police state, against the fascist government. UC Berkeley is joining in this takeover of campus buildings as well, along with University of South, Car uh, South Carolina, no, uh, along with uh, USC in California, also occupying the campus spaces in support of Palestine. Uh, the claims that these protests are anti-Semitic are uh, just plain propaganda. It's state in, statements like that that are being said by the State Department, by the government, by Netanyahu, by people who have a stake in making sure that the people of the country do not have a voice, that, they, that protesters are outlawed before they're even able to get a word in edgewise. Uh, the German police have been using excessive force against pro-Palestinian campers, uh, especially the ones that are uh, parked out in front of the, uh, the German parliament in Berlin. I wanted to read some articles, uh, maybe one article here that I have from Al Jazeera, as they're talking about what's going on here in the United States as well. With eyes on U.S. college campuses, students stress Gaza is why we're here. Students say growing protests on U.S. university campuses are part of a fight against genocide in the Gaza Strip. Global attention has turned to universities across the United States, where students have erected encampments to demand ac action to end Israel's war on the Gaza Strip. Now, let me just be clear here. The Gaza Strip is basically just one giant concentration camp. Uh, they've, bombarded it, they've bombarded it. They've destroyed buildings. They've destroyed countless hospitals, countless schools. So, you know what? They, they actually, and that's not even countless. They've counted how many schools and hospitals they've destroyed. Um, but they uh, cannot find all of the bodies. They can't find all of the people that have been murdered by the IDF, by airstrikes, by bombings. And all this nonsense about Hamas being their target, the, uh, they're, they're, they're not targeting Hamas. They're targeting their own civilians. They're targeting people, people like you and me, people who have children. They're targeting the children. And the growing protests have taken root on the campuses of some of the country's top academic institutions, including Columbia and Harvard. And over the past weeks, they have spurred heated debates around freedom of speech, Palestinian solidarity activism in the U.S., and the use of force to disperse student protesters, among other issues. Now... Let's talk about that. Freedom of speech. What does that even mean? It means that your rights that you have, your rights, those can be taken away at any given point by the government if they feel that it is necessary. That you don't have any rights. Human rights are a farce. International law is a farce. 
none of these things are real it all what only matters is who's in power and who's making the decisions and who is writing the laws and i mean look at the uh the bid for palestinian statehood and joining in the un uh everyone agreed to it everyone voted yes except for the uk which abstained and except for the united states which directly opposed it because they want palestine to be destroyed they want it to be demolished and genocided they are funding israel with 3.3 billion dollars per year plus another six billion on the way for israel and ukraine um it's absolutely disgusting and Biden is a war criminal. Biden is a genocidal maniac. And all of the police that support him and the police that are cracking down on these protests, shame on you. They're fucking disgusting. But the students at the heart of the movement say the reason they began their demonstrations, the pressing need to end Israel's deadly bombardment in Gaza, risks being lost amid the cacophony of voices and distractions. Gaza is why we're here. Gaza is why we're doing this, said Rue, a student at the new school in New York City, who asked to only identify her by her first name due to fear of reprisals. The new school encampment is happening because we want to make sure that we are doing what we can to end this genocide, Rue told Al Jazeera. They have a list of demands. Encampments have popped up in universities and colleges across the U.S. this month as a Palestinian death toll in Gaza surpasses 34,300 mark amid reports that mass graves were uncovered on the coastal enclave. Yes, there were mass graves found at two different hospitals, the Al-Shifa hospital and another hospital that I can't remember the name of right off the top of my head, um, but they're both within uh, hundreds, hundreds of people. Students issued a list of demands to their respective universities, including divesting from any companies that may be profiting from the Gaza war or providing the Israeli military with weapons and other support. Now, okay. All right, let's finish this article. They have also urged an end to reprisals against students who have spoken out in support of Palestinians and for administrators to pledge not to send police or other law enforcement agencies onto campuses to break up their protests, which they have not listened to. Of course they haven't, because the university admin are just, uh, the universities are basically just a hedge fund uh, posing as a public institution that actually educates and teaches people. All they want is money and they get their money from the state. They get their money from private donors. They get their money from people who have a, have a, have a, have a, have a, have a foot to lose in gaining the land that, that Gaza is fighting so hard not to lose images of throngs of New York police departments off officers marching onto the Columbia university campus to disperse a Gaza protest in Cayman earlier this week, galvanized students and other parts of the U S to set up their own protest sites too. Hundreds of students have been arrested across this country since the encampments began. A first year PhD student at New York University who spoke to Al Jazeera on condition of anonymity due to a fear of reprisals said students are acting on the ideals and the histories that they're being taught. Now, what are they being taught? They're taught that the United States fought against Nazism in World War II. They're being taught that fascism is something to fight against what Nazi Germany is, and what modern-day Germany is as well. The governments that we have been taught to fight against in our history books are the governments that we are fighting against now, today, our own governments. As students who are being taught in class about colonialism, about indigenous rights, about the effects of nonviolent protests across the country, it would be extremely hypocritical, or it would, be to or it would totally undermine the point of our education if we did not act. The 25 year old said man after my own heart at the very least we can show that there was resistance to what is happening in the gaza strip the student the student added the horrors in gaza are really beyond imagining these small acts of resistance these are small sacrifices they are nothing compared to what is happening on the ground in palestine scholasticide in gaza like other protesters across the U.S., many American students have said they felt an impetus to act given the U.S. government's longstanding support for Israel. The U.S. gives Israel $3.8 billion in military assistance annually, and President Joe Biden has continued to provide staunch support for the country, to the country amid the Gaza war. 
On Wednesday, Biden signed into law a massive funding package that will provide an additional $17 billion to Israel. See, my, my earlier numbers, I didn't even know what the fuck I was talking about. That's, 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 that's even worse. The Israeli military's attack on Palestinian students, teachers, and academic institutions across Gaza during the war also have acted as a catalyst for university protests, the students said. Last week, a group of United Nations experts noted that 80% of schools in the Palestinian enclave have been damaged or destroyed since the war began in early October. Nearly 5,500 students have been killed, alongside 261 teachers and 95 u university professors. It may be reasonable to ask if there is an inten intentional effort to compre comprehensively destroy the Palestinian education system, an action known as scholasticide, the experts said in a statement on April 18th. These attacks are not isolated incidents. They present a, sy a systematic pattern of violence aimed at dismantling the very foundation of Palestinian society. <sighs> okay, I'm going to stop there because I, I can't I can't read anymore right now on that. Um, I, I want to instead move on to uh, some of my own research that I've been doing into who is funding Israel. Um, I have here a small breakdown of how much aid Israel is receiving from Western imperialist powers. Now, you heard the figures just now of the three point. Um, what was it that will provide an additional 17 billion dollars to Israel? You know. U.S. President Joe Biden supplies Israel with upwards of $3 billion worth of weapons and bombs and other military equipment since 2008. They also signed a memorandum in 2016 committing the U.S. to providing $38 billion in assistance up to 2028, comprising a $33 billion in foreign military financing grants, as well as $5 billion for missile defense. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz sent about $343 million in arms exports to Israel in 2023. UK Secretary of State David Cameron supplied 42 million pounds, which is about $53, $53 million worth of arms to Israel in 2022. Italian Minister of Defense Guido Crescetto has sent 2.1 million euros, $2.3 million worth of arms and munitions to Israel in just the last three months of 2023 alone. The list goes on. And, 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 and this aid is tied up with the private companies manufacturing these arms and aircrafts and other military equipment. This is what is referred to as the military industrial complex. According to the Campaign Against Arms Trade, Lockheed Martin is the world's largest arms corporation. I'm sure you've heard of them. Based in the U.S. They have supplied Israel with over 100 F F-16I combat aircraft, uh, 50 F-35s to replace the F-16s. They also have roughly 2,000 employees working in the U.K., uh, BAE Systems, the largest British-based multinational aerospace weapons manufacturing and information security company, is Lockheed Martin's main industrial partner. BAE produced the MK-38 MOD-2 machine gun system and supplies it to the IDF. Boeing is the U.S. Com US company producing arms and aircraft. They have provided F-15s, Apache attack helicopters, and guided bombs to Israel. Thryssen Krupp Marine Systems is a German shipbuilder and have supplied six Dolphin submarines to Israel. Back in 2022, Israel signed a new $3.4 billion deal with the corporation. They also signed an industrial cooperation agreement that amounted to more than 850 million euros. Three Dakar, models, submarine, three Dakar model submarines will replace three of the aging Dolphin submarines. And that's not all of it. That's not exhaustive. There's way more that's going on. Uh, behind the scenes and especially way more funding that's been going to Israel since the war escalated in October 7th on October 7th. Um, I have a report that goes on to talk about the school buildings that have been destroyed. Uh, the report stated that out of 563 school buildings, 165 of the 212 that received direct hits are in areas designated by the Israeli military as forced evacuation zones. What does that mean? They are telling civilians to go to those areas for evacuation and then bombing said areas after people have gathered there. This is deliberate genocide on a massive industrial scale. The entire world wants to kill. And by the entire world, I mean 
the all of the Western powers, the Western imperialist powers, all the Western fascist imperialist powers want to kill Gaza. They want to make sure that there is no life breathing there anymore. And it's disgusting. That's all I have to say about this for right now. I'll see you guys in the next video.